I think Jerry West was the equal of Michael Choi. Michael might have played the game uh, maybe more athletic than Jerry did, but there wasn't a better clutch player in the history of the NBA other than Jerry West. Now you're going to have Jerry West try to get it, and he's going to try to go all the way, most likely. He would let it go, and he would just start running to the locker room. Five, four, three, two, two. points. It's over! Everyone knew Jerry West was going to get the basketball. Before Jerry West shot the basketball, he, he would always boom, boom, boom. Dribble the basketball really hard twice. Boom, boom, boom. Bang, bang, shoot. Bang, bang. I mean, drive, stop, up, form, in. You would think that he wasn't that quick, and he was. You would think that he wasn't that aggressive, and he was. You would think that, that he wasn't that strong, and he was, and the guy was a smart player. He got all of his accolades because he was such a prolific scorer. But people who knew the game and who had to play against him respected how good he was defensively. There would be situations where you'd come down three on one with Jerry West, the only defender, and you were afraid to do anything with the ball because you knew you'd have him going the other way with it. He hated losing more than any man I've ever been around in my life. Little did anyone know the inner fight Jerry West was waging with himself. We want to tell you that due to the lockout, all current NBA personnel are prohibited from discussing the issues facing the league today and any of the current players. So as we welcome in the logo himself, Jerry West, it allows us to focus in on your new book, West by West, My Charmed, Tormented Life. And in it, you reveal your father physically abused you when you were young and that you've battled depression for the majority of your life. Why did you come forward to discuss these issues now? Well, I, th I think this is a very reflective period in my life, to be honest with you. And I, I realize how fortunate I've been in terms of being able to live my dreams as a young kid. And, um, you know, so much is written to embellish who we are as athletes. And sometimes people don't know the inner struggle that goes on with trying to accomplish something, trying to win acceptance, and obviously for your family. And then also, I think. I've had so many people here in recent years, as I've gotten involved with a lot of charitable aspects, who've, who've talked about some of the things that they face as a ch childhood, in their childhood, and how they've overcome it. And uh, this is a book that um, <clears throat> I've had a lot of people that didn't want me to write, and particularly my family members. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's a, it's a true story. It's not something that's fabricated. I lived this life, and also, unfortunately, I've lived some of the other things that. Uh, I guess, demons that we all share. You, living the dream for you did not satisfy your soul? Not really. Um, I was like a tormented person. You know, if, if we won, I was elated. But as soon as the game was over, worrying about the game you're going to play tomorrow night. And um, it was always the same for me. The most special times of my life were when you had a chance to go out and play and compete and, and compete against the very best, both in college and high school. And, Obviously, uh, having a chance to play for the United States as an amateur and winning a gold medal was probably the most special moment of my life. There have been a lot of highs, of course, in your life as well as a player, as a general manager. We want to go through some of them with you. There were the Showtime years. There's Magic and Kareem, and you helped put the, that team together. What, what were those years like for you? Oh, my goodness. Uh, that, those teams were unbelievably special. You know, again, I'm very prejudiced when I, when I talk about those teams, but those are the best teams I've ever seen play. We had... We had so many great players on that team that uh, all of them didn't get a chance to be recognized for their ability because of the dominance of Abdul-Jabbar and Magic Johnson. And then saw the trans uh, transformation from where Kareem was the, the big guy, the signing light, then all of a sudden uh, Abdul-Jabbar took, took a back seat and he handled that so beautifully. And to then watch Urban Johnson lead these teams was, was an amazing time for Los Angeles fans. And for me, I love to watch teams play together, and it was a really special time for me. And kind of emulated in the topics you discussed with your book, Showtime ended uh, exactly 20 years ago next month when Magic Johnson would announce that he was retiring. He discovered that he was HIV positive, very different disease then than the way it's treated now. Uh, you wrote about that day in the book. What do you remember most from that day? Well, obviously, I knew about the day before, but I think when you get a bunch of people, just to see him get up there and handle it the way he did was uh, remarkable. Um, I mean, I'm happy to say he and I are very close today and we're going to have a thing uh, in Los Angeles where he's going to talk about the 20th anniversary of it. But uh, the way he's conducted himself and handled himself with that adversity there, when he was in the highlight of his career, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone enjoy playing the game more. And obviously, 
that smile. When, when he didn't have the basketball hand in his hands, he was Irvin Johnson. With basketball in his hand, he was Magic Johnson. And someone that I'll admire forever and thank God I have a chance to see him play and more importantly, spend some quality time with him. 20 years ago and uh, 20 years today and now here he is still thriving and <laughs> on TV and talking basketball. It's wonderful to see him on our airwaves as well. There was going to be a transition no matter how it ended. With Showtime ending, you're going to have to get new players. Along came Kobe Bryant, along came Shaquille O'Neal. You wrote you needed a coach that would be able to take that team up to its potential. <clears throat> that coach became Phil Jackson, who you now later write you had almost no relationship with. How did that come to be? Well, you know, it happens sometimes, Ward. I've sat in locker rooms, and, and it, this was no disrespect to Phil, not at all. I think a lot of people want to make more than what it is. We just didn't have a relationship. And, uh, but I've sat in locker rooms where players didn't like each other at all. As a matter of fact, they despised each other, but yet they got the job done. And Phil would, did exactly what we wanted to in Los Angeles. We won uh, three championships in a row with him there. I, I, re, I left after the first year, but it, it wasn't about him. I, I'd gotten to the point where, as I say, I couldn't even watch the games. I mean, it was almost pathetic for someone who's a grown man to not even be able to enjoy watching him. And you're always wondering, when is somebody going to get hurt? And, I, and we knew we had championship caliber teams. But he brought that all together. So uh, I think people made a lot more out of it than what it really is. But uh, uh, he and I just didn't have a relationship, it was plain and simple. And uh, he's here to, uh, if he wants to talk about it, fine. But I, I did not have a relationship with him. Uh, we got to get one thing from you because you are Mr. Clutch. You played at a number of Game 7s, and we got one in sports tonight. You got some advice for the Cardinals and the Rangers as they finish up the World Series? Well, I can tell you one thing that probably happened. It, it would be a night where all of those players uh, probably didn't sleep very well. Um, I can tell you the greatest thrill in your life is to sit in the locker room knowing that you're going to have an opportunity to play a game that's really significant. And it's unfortunate somebody's going to lose tonight. These teams have been had kind of storybook years. Um, I have no idea who's going to win, but I know going to that ballpark today, there won't be as much chatter going on in the bus or however they get there. And um, it's just somebody, maybe 100 yards or 100 feet from each other, somebody's going to be elated. <clears throat> but I'm not sure people really know how, how terrible it feels to lose it, particularly the thing you want to win the most. You got a winner? Um, you know, I don't. Uh, I like both of these teams because uh, I kind of root for the teams that can't spend millions and millions of dollars. And these are two teams that have uh, they've had tremendous years. Texas would be a feel-good story, but I've always been a fan of the Cardinals since the days of Stan Musial. Been a remarkable run by Jerry West in his career and a very candid look at his life through his own words. West by West, my charmed and tormented life is in bookstores now. The legendary Jerry West. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.